Planning an art exhibition is an exciting, but sometimes overwhelming task. <laughs> One of the first and most crucial steps in this journey is taking the time to deeply reflect on your recent body of work. How much easier would it be to choose a theme if you could identify the common threads that run through all of your work? Wouldn't it be helpful if you could also consider what emotions or reactions you want to evoke in your audience and how your exhibition theme could support this? And would it be helpful if you identified any gaps in your current body of work that need to be addressed or expanded upon? I'm Mariah Elise. And this is Dear Glory, where we talk about the nuances of the art world from my learnings this far, my personal experiences, my gained experience from others, and my perspective. In today's video, we're going to cover why reflection is essential before you start planning your exhibition, how to thoroughly review your recent work to uncover themes and patterns, the importance of asking yourself the right questions to dig deeper into your artistic motivations, how to put your reflection to use in practical ways when planning your exhibition, the importance of maintaining connectivity and recognizable identifiers in your work to avoid confusing your audience, how to identify and fill any gaps in your current body of work, and last, strategies to evoke specific emotions and reactions to your audience. Now, throughout the video, I'll also be sharing important opportunities, including how you can get access to a significant discount on my upcoming exhibition planning workbook and details on a free webinar that you're not gonna wanna miss. Now, ultimately, reflecting on your work is the key to a cohesive exhibition. By taking the time to understand the underlying themes and connections in your work, in your art, you'll be better equipped to create an exhibition that resonates with both you and your audience. Now, let's talk about why reflection is essential. Before you start planning the logistics of your exhibition, it's essential to understand the underlying narrative of your work. Reflection helps you uncover the patterns and elements that naturally emerge into your art, giving you clear direction for your exhibition's theme. For instance, you might notice that your work consistently explores themes of isolation or disconnection, or that you frequently use a specific color pattern within your work. Heavy reflection allows you to identify these things. Now let's get into reviewing your recent work. Begin by thoroughly reviewing your recent body of work. This includes your portfolio, your finished portfolio, I mean, your sketchbooks. And your sketchbooks are really, really important to kind of just take a look at and revisit and review. And any recent completed projects, look for commonalities and themes. Are you repeatedly drawn to certain subjects or concepts? Examine your use of color. Do you gravitate towards particular shades or contrast? Consider your techniques, your approach to the work. Are there certain methods or styles that you're consistently exploring? And also, if you've been writing about your work, which I highly recommend you write, write, write about all of your work in its entirety, revisit these writings often so that you remember and understand your thoughts in your current moments, in those current moments. Now, I wanna give you guys a quick reminder. If you're watching this video before October 16th, 2024, I'll be hosting a free webinar on October 16th, 2024 from 7 to 7.30 p.m. Eastern on exhibition planning. We've already done this webinar one time. It was amazing. Thank you all to everyone who came. If you are watching this after, simply just go to my website to see when the next one is happening, when the next is scheduled, and just sign up. It's a free webinar. We're gonna get deep into essential elements of planning and executing successful art exhibitions, self-hosted, covering everything from process and development, developing a project plan to budgeting, financial planning, and executing exhibition day. If you attend, you'll also receive the first chapter of my exhibition planning workbook for free. I would really love to see some new names and faces. Our last webinar was such a great success. I'm really excited to do it again. The link to register is in the description below. Now let's talk about answering the right questions. As you review your work, ask yourself a series of questions to dig deeper into your motivation and your inspirations. Some key questions are, what is driving me to create? What story am I trying to tell? What narrative am I trying to tell? What emotions am I trying to evoke? What emotions are evoked in me that's even allowing me to create what I'm creating right now? 
How do I want my audience to feel when they see my work? How do I feel when I see my work? What emotions or ideas do I repeatedly explore? Now, now let's talk about identifying patterns and themes. Once you review your work and you ask yourself these questions, start identifying patterns and themes that naturally emerge. Group your works into categories based on these themes. It's natural that you explore many different things. It's natural that you expand on some of the things that you've already explored in the past. So group your works into categories based on these themes, color palettes, techniques that you've identified through these patterns. You are basically becoming a student of your own work. Study your own work. Group your work into your categories based on these things. Consider how these elements could be put together, woven together into a narrative or concept for these exhibitions that you're developing. And look guys, don't forget, if you're watching this before October 2nd, join the wait list for my exhibition planning workbook, which launches on October 2nd, and you'll receive a discount for 10 bucks to help you get started on planning your own exhibition. Now keep in mind, this is a PDF version. We will be dropping the physical version of the book soon, but keep in mind, this is a PDF for you guys to download. It is an ebook version for you to download. You can download it as soon as you pay for it. The workbook is designed to, the, the workbook is designed to guide you through the entire process, including everything we talked about today and in past videos. The link to join the wait list is right below. Look, it's, I can't, can't, I can't, there's no way I could cover everything in these videos. I could do it in 10 minute bites and in 20 minute bites. But when you have it all together right in front of you, I realized that that works for me. And so I wanted to put something together based on the things that I've learned, the things that I've gathered from others for you guys to kind of use as a guide to host your own exhibition. So let me know if you guys will actually just join the wait list and are, just join the wait list. Yeah, so just join the wait list. The link is below. If you're watching this after October 2nd, it's available for you to purchase. So go ahead and get that. Now let's talk about how to put this reflection to use. Now that you've identified these patterns and these themes, it's time to put your reflection to, to use in a practical way. I want you to start by crafting a, a clear theme or concept for your exhibition based on the patterns that you've identified. Create a title for your exhibition that encapsulates this theme and resonates with both you and your audience, something that is easy to grasp, something that is easy to remember. Create a title for your exhibition that encapsulates this theme and resonates with both you and your audience. As you plan the layout of your exhibition, think about how the flow of the artwork will tell a cohesive story, okay, cohesive. Think about the audience's experience when they walk into the gallery, when they walk into the space, from beginning to end, where are their eyes drawn to? What are they looking at first? What are they looking at last? What are they looking at next? Create a layout for your exhibition thinking about these things. Now I wanna talk about the importance of connectivity and recognizable identifiers. I think this is one of the most important things that we could ever talk about. And I should probably make an entire video on just this, recognizable identifiers. As artists, it's really natural to want to explore new directions and push the boundaries of your art over and over and over again. However, it is crucial to make sure that these explorations don't confuse your audience, okay? And it are straight too far from what they've come to know and love about your work. Maintaining a common thread and approach to your work is key to building a strong, recognizable identity now, I'm not trying to confine you to a genre. That's not what I'm trying to do. And I know a lot of artists, I hear many super emerging, really beginning emerging artists say, I don't wanna be in a box. I wanna create what I wanna create. And that's fine, create what you wanna create. But you have to remember, people need to be able to identify your work. When they walk into somewhere, they need to say, they need to be able to say, hey, that's such and such as work. They walk to another place. They need to be able to easily identify that that is your work, that that is your work. That's having the same consistent, strong approach to your work is gonna come in handy. So you wanna maintain this common thread and approach to your work is key to building a strong, recognizable identity. So let's go on to talk about filling the gaps in your work. You tell me, wouldn't it be helpful if you identified any gaps in your current or previous body of work that need to be addressed or expanded upon. This step is crucial 
and creating a, mo a more cohesive and comprehensive body of work in general, but also cohesive and comprehensive exhibition. But when you do this, when you're filling in these gaps, you can, it gives you the opportunity to expand on the last thing that you spoke about, the last thing that you had to say in your last body of work. So identify any gaps in your current body of work that need to be addressed or expanded upon and do that. Also think about evoking emotions and audience reactions. Now, some people may not agree that you have to have some type of focus on audience, but when the work leaves your studio, it belongs to the world. Now, okay, let me, let me come back. I'm not saying don't create for yourself. I'm not telling you to create for the audience. You need to 100% be creating for yourself, but you gotta have some type of understanding that once it leaves your studio, it does belong to the world. And I don't even wanna say, I don't even wanna tell you what you need to be doing, to be honest. I'm just telling you what I see. And when I see an artist make a switch, how it affects their career. I'm not here to tell you what you guys need to do. <laughs> so when I say you need to, you got to, when I use language like that, don't take it as me being definitive in the in the choices that you need to make because I'm just speaking from my experience, right? I'm just speaking from the things that I see around me and what I've seen work and what I see, what I've been able to see has not worked. You may have a conversation with someone that has a completely different opinion than me, completely different opinion than me. I might have a conversation that has with someone that has a completely different opinion with me. That's okay. My opinion is not always going to be the opinion that you need to go with. So take into consideration, take what I say with a grain of thought, with a grain of salt, take what I, but, but also do what you think is best. <laughs> Always don't say Mariah at least told me to do this. I did it and it didn't work. So when I use language like need and you need to, you need to just take that, just take that with a grain of salt. I'm just a human with perspective, giving you my perspective. So yeah, think about evoking emotions and audience reactions. So anyway, some people might not agree that you need to have that focus on audience, but when the work leaves your studio, it belongs to the world. It does. It belongs to the people that are viewing it. Their perspectives are now put placed upon the work. It belongs to their perceptions of what you put into the world. So if you want to consider how it might make them feel and consider how it makes you feel in return, how they may react to it. Wouldn't it be helpful if you considered our reactions you want to evoke in your audience and how your exhibition's theme could support that. Understanding the emotional journey you want your audience to take is key to creating a powerful exhibition, okay? Now, in conclusion, maintaining a consistent thread throughout your body of work while identifying and using your unique artistic markers is crucial in creating a strong recognizable identity. Let me say that again, maintaining a consistent thread throughout your work while identifying and using your unique artistic markers are crucial in creating a strong and recognizable identity. Okay, so just to kind of go back and take a look at what we discussed today. We talked about why reflection is essential. We spoke about reviewing your recent body of work and why that's important. We talked about asking yourself the right questions we talked about identifying patterns and themes in your work. We spoke about how to use reflection and put it to use and the importance of connectivity and recognizable identifiers, as well as filling in the gaps in, about, in your body of work and evoking emotions and audience retention. Let me know guys, if you have any questions, if there's something that you want me to expound on, each one of those sections, each thing we just spoke about really briefly, we can do an entire video. On. So if you leave me a comment in the comment section, which one you really want me to focus on, go a little bit deeper into, just give me that information. If it's enough of y'all saying, I want you to talk about this, I'll make it a point to focus on that. I want you to remember, don't forget to join the wait list for the exhibition planning workbook, which is launching on October 2nd to get your, to get your discount code. If you watch it after this, it's already available. Mark your calendar for October 16th. Our free webinar is the perfect opportunity to dig into exhibition planning. I can't wait to see y'all there. Thank y'all for coming to the last one. The links for everything are in the description. And I want you guys to remember, if you're watching this after October 16th, just go to my website, MariahLease.com, and you can look at what the schedule is going to be going forward for these free webinars. 
all right if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and share this with others other artists other people that might be planning an exhibition and stay tuned for more tips on making your art exhibition a success don't forget i'm on this road to glory with y'all we're all on the road to glory i'm just giving you guys the information i've learned this is dear glory where we talk about the nuances of the art world from my learnings thus far my personal experience my gained experience from others and my perspective i love you guys and i thank you guys so much for being here so so much stay on the road to glory keep your head up don't ever let them see you sweat peace i'm out